today, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to read two verses. And this is what the word of the Lord declares. It says, therefore. Someone say, therefore. Therefore. We know when we read scripture, when we see therefore, that something powerful just happened. And we're going to walk through that. But it says, therefore, we are the Messiah's representatives. As though God were pleading through us. We plead on the Messiah's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Verse 21, God made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that God's righteousness would be produced in us. Therefore, we are the Messiah's representatives. Today, we're going to talk about the idea. You saw it on the screen. Represent to re Present. Represent to represent. And, and, and this is not just something that I'm just throwing out there to those that want to accept it. As a follower of Jesus Christ, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we are all called to represent Christ. Amen? Amen. Every day. I, I share this that, that let church starts for us, it starts at 1130. Because church begins when we leave this place. Church starts as we leave this place and share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around us. This is great. This is a Tesla station. Amen. I I rented a Tesla down in Florida. It's the last time I ran an electric car. Had to find a charging port. But this is your place that you can charge up to do the work of the Lord. So, so so, So church begins... At 1130 for us, as we represent Christ in this world, in this broken world. But as we represent Christ, I want you to hear this. That there's so much that has gone on in our world, especially as far as being a believer in Jesus Christ. So that many times we have to represent Christ to the world as well. They, 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 they've seen Christians and, and, and they've seen us misuse the name of Christ. And, and, and they've seen us misrepresent Christ. And, and, and once again, we, we're, we're, for those not, like, I, I got this from Michael Todd, but I changed the first one. We're, we're a hot church, right? We're honest, we're open, and we're transparent. Sometimes there are people out there that don't have the best idea of what it looks like to be a believer. Because they're confused. They see us talk one way on Sunday, but they see us act a different way on Monday. And I'm not calling everybody to say that you have to be perfect, but there should be something inside of you tugging at your heart when you don't hit the mark. And so representing Christ to represent Christ is us saying that, that yeah, I'm sorry, you, you, might, have wrong, you might have run into the, the wrong Christian, but I want to talk to you a little bit about Jesus and what he means to me. I want to talk to you a little bit about what it means to be saved, and it doesn't mean that you do all the right things, and it doesn't mean that you go to church every Sunday. Yes, I want you here, but it doesn't mean that. How do I know that? Someone say, how do I know, Pastor Larry? Because at the cross of Jesus... There were three people. There were Jesus in the center, and there was men on each side. And the man on one side said to Christ that, 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 that he gave his life at that, that time. And, and Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't go to one Bible study. He wasn't baptized. Oh, my goodness. He didn't know anything about the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. He had no idea what the Trinity meant, but he knew in his heart that this man, Jesus, was different and that he didn't deserve the cross that he was on and and, and something tugged at his heartstrings. And I want us to represent Christ that way in our world today. I want us to go to those and, 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 and be moved to compassion, to say that if when the time comes, because we all are going to stand before the throne. 
But the one thing, and I was thinking about this as I was driving the other day, the one thing that I don't want to happen is that as I approach the throne, that my neighbors on my block walk up to the throne with me. And as I enter into the gates, God, Jesus, is turning their back to them and saying, go. And they look at me and say, Larry, you, you lived beside me all these many years, but you never told me. You never pledged me. You never urged me to know this man named Jesus. I want them to say, you know what, Larry, no, you told me every day. I, I watched the way you treated your daughters. I watched the way that you treated your family, your wife, and, 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 and you shared Jesus with me. And I chose not to believe, and, 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 and though it's all on me. But I don't want it to happen because I missed an opportunity to represent Christ. It's an awesome responsibility. It's an awesome opportunity to be Christ's representative. And actually, in most Bibles, it'll say that, that we are Christ's ambassadors. As being a Christ ambassador, an ambassador in the physical, in the physical. This is what an ambassador is. An ambassador is a political appointee whose job is to represent his or her home government before the rulers of another country. Come on. And they are sent, watch this, they're sent to a foreign nation to live inside that country's borders separate of that foreign territory. They're sent to live in a foreign nation. That's the physical, but in the spiritual, we, we say it this way, to be in the world, but, but not of it. It's John 17, 16 through 18. It says that they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Verse 17, it says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Who here knows that you've been sent by a foreign nation into a world to represent Christ and to represent Christ to them? Being this representative is us recognizing that, that our citizenship, our homeland isn't here. And I think that's where we've gotten it wrong because many of us, both believers and non-believers, we, we, we don't believe that there's a next. And so what we try to do is that we try to make earth our heaven. If they call it make heaven on earth. And, and so we think that by acquiring all these different things... But by, by having all this stuff, by doing all these different things that, that we've met this inner desire that's within us. But I can share with you right now that you can have 50 cars, you can have 20 homes, you can travel the whole entire earth. But there's a craving inside of each and every one of us that things will never satisfy. It's a part that only Christ can satisfy. And Philippians 3.20 says that for our citizenship is not here. Our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So today, what, what, what I want us to do is I want us to kind of re, reset and, and, and reimagine us being representatives of Jesus Christ. Representing Christ to someone that, that might have seen or heard of or experienced Christ in a wrong way. I want us to, to look at this, and I want us to be encouraged to say, Pastor Larry, as I leave this place, I want to be a better representative of Jesus. Not just because of you, but because of God's word. And because God's word encourages us to do this. It may take a little bit, it may take us out of our comfort zone. Amen. Where are all my introverts? You don't even want to raise your hand. <laughs> It may take you stepping out your comfort zone. Where are my loud ones? Amen. 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 It may take you in a moment, God saying, shut up and listen. Being a representative of Christ is, is being obedient to our homeland and our, 
and the ruler of that land, and that ruler is Jesus Christ. So, so, so I want to talk about three things that, 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 that allow us that, three things that we have to know to be a representative of Jesus Christ, to be able to represent Christ to a broken world. Because who here knows that we're living in a broken world? I say it, every, we are broken people living in a broken world. And the moment that you realize that for yourself, a layer is peeled off and, and something special happens within you. And you realize that I'm broken and I can't fix me. I'm, I'm, me I'm messed up. I'm tore up from the floor up. And I can't do anything about it. And then you run to Jesus and saying, I need you to fix me. I need you to get me right. Because God, you know everything going on inside of me. You know everything that I've been through. You know my experiences. You know my hurt. You know my pain. You know how I want to shut down because of what I've been through. But Jesus is saying, nah, 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 nah. no, you, you can't, you can't, you can't because I need you. I need you to represent me. So the three things I want to talk about today, and we're going to walk through this scripture. If you guys know me, we're going to walk, we're going to exegete this scripture right now. We're going to walk through it and see what are these three things that we must know to represent Christ in a broken world. And the first thing, the first thing for my note takers, the first thing that you have to know is that you first have to know your motive. Know your motive. In verse 14, the A portion, it says this. It says, the love of who? The love of the Messiah controls us. For we are convinced of this, that one man died for all people. Is that right, Pastor Larry? Is, shouldn't that say that one man died for just the good people, right? The ones that get it right, right? He died for all people, and therefore all people have died. The thing that motivates us is the fact is the love of God, the love of Christ. That's the thing that controls us. That's the thing that should motivate us. I need you to know the why because there's going to come a time in your life when the when, where, and what is not going to make sense. You're not going to understand, God, why, why are you telling me to go to food line when you know, when you know that Audi got the cheaper chicken on sale this week? Why? Because God needs you to go there because there's a cashier there that I want you to talk to and share Jesus with. And that's that love. Love, love will make you do crazy things. And, 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 and who here knows that, that sometimes in love, uh, that you can be angry in love. How do I know this? It's, I, I love the illustrations that Jesus gives me right before my sermons. So yesterday we had an uh, outing in our neighborhood, in our community. Um, they, they, they do like a harvest thing where the kids came out and they got on the hay thing and they, they rode a tractor up and down and they had food and everything. So I was in the house, you know, with my front door open. I'm getting better as a dad because I, I'm really protective over my girls. But I was able to say, yeah, you go out and play with your friends, and, 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 and I'll check on you. Of course, I fell asleep, you know, but it was only for like 20, 30 minutes. But I woke up, and I, I, I got back up, and I checked on them. But, 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 I, but I came outside. I, I, I saw my big one. I saw Chloe. But I didn't see, I didn't see my stinker butt. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see my mini-me. And, 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 and so I, I, I said, Chloe, where's, where's Brielle? Now, where are my parents? Raise your hand if you're a parent. All right, all right, get ready. Y'all ready? You ready? You ready? I said, Chloe, where, where's, where's Brielle? Oh, oh, she went, she went in that house. <laughs> I can't even put the mouth, mic to my mouth right now. I got angry. I, 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 I didn't embarrass Brielle. But I said, Chloe, go to, that, go to them, you go to that door, and you go inside, and you get your sister. It wasn't that I didn't want Brielle to have fun, and I didn't, that I didn't want her to meet new people, but I was angry. But, but who here knows that that anger wasn't an anger towards her? 
But that anger was a, was a result of a love for her. It's a love that wants to protect my daughters no matter what. And I know going into a, a neighbor's house that I don't know isn't the safest environment. And, and because my love for her, it made me angry because I, I said to her, I, you don't know what could have happened to you. But it was driven by love. I was upset. I was angry. I went inside. I did explain this to Brielle because Brielle does understand that, 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 uh, that my middle camera, can you zoom in on me as much as you can? Because so, I need you to see this. My daughters and my family understand that when this happens, when daddy bites his lip, two things happen. Either I'm thinking very deeply or I'm upset. And so I almost bit a hole in my lip as I walked home. But it was all surrounded with the fact that I love my daughters. And as a father, I want to protect them in any way possible. And it made me angry that, that, that she put herself in that predicament. But that was all driven by love. Now watch this. If I can get this angry for my daughter... How angry, how upset must Christ be when he looks at his loved ones and he sees us going down the wrong path, doing the wrong thing. God said, God, don't, don't you date him. Don't, don't you go out with her. And, and we're just stubborn. It's an agape love that Christ has for each and every one of us. It's his love for us, his love in us, that should compel us to be a better representative of Christ. It's Romans 5, 8, it says that, but God demonstrated his love for us or towards us that in while, listen, while we were still jacked up, while we were still sinners, that Christ died for you and for me. That's how much he loved us. That's how much he loves us. Christ's love, he, it's so much that he laments for his lost loved ones. His love is so deep that he died for each and every one of us. He died for us so that we could live for him. It sounds like an oxymoron, but that's, that's the way it is in the, in the body of God. In the body, it says, it's, it's give, and you will receive. Submit, and you will be blessed. It, it's an oxymoron. It, it's different. But it's a love that, that should motivate us to be, I, I want to be a representative for you. And I want it to be driven by love. Verse 15 in, in, in 2 Corinthians, it says, he died for all people so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died and rose for them. It's love. Love should be our motive. Love is the thing. When, you, when you're tired and you don't feel like it, love is telling you, go and get up because I need you to go somewhere. I need you to do this thing. Love. Love's our motive. But not just, just our motive, knowing your motive. But secondly, I want you to know your marking. Someone say, I'm marked. I, I, I need a lot. You guys are embarrassing me in front of company. Say, I'm marked. It's a marking that, that others see. You do know that, right? As a believer in Christ, that there's a marking on your life. In verse 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in the Messiah, he is a new creation. Old things have disappeared. And look, all things have become new. I memorized it. Behold, it says that for you know that you are a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all oh, have become new. This marking is a marking of newness in your life. You no longer have to live under the old. It's a newness that you should walk upright in. It's a newness that, that should make you say that I'm no longer going to live the way that I used to live. It's, it's a newness that, 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 that has to be maintained by continual communication with the Father. Because who here knows that you can be new today but old tomorrow and feel old 
It's a difference of being old and feeling old. Pastor Larry will always be 35. It just seemed like a good age to me. And as long as I got just for men, I will stay 35. But there's a newness that Christ wants you to walk in. It's a newness that, 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 that when I do mess up and I do feel old, I get in communication with the Father, and he makes me new again. He renews me day after day. But how do we get this? We get this by our first. We get this by God's word. It is not deep. I, I tell everybody that sometimes we've made Christianity and being a believer in Christ, we made it difficult. We've made it more complex than, than what it, we make people do things and jump through hoops, and that's not what Jesus meant. By grace are you saved alone, by faith. Not any works of your own, lest any man or woman should boast. You did nothing. And it's easy, but you're, you're, you're renewed by your communication with the Father from hearing God's word. It says, so by faith coming, so when faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, you're renewed by the hearing of word, God's word. You're renewed by reading God's word. This is blessed is he who reads and those who hear the word of the prophecy to keep those things which are written for this time, for the time is near. I don't know if you feel it. I'm, I'm, I, said, I said this before, I'm, I'm not one of the ones that try to put a calendar on Christ. But Revelation does show us a lot of things that are going to happen as the time gets near. But the time is near. You, you get it by not only hearing and reading God's word, but by studying God's word. It says that these people in, in Acts chapter 17, the Bereans, that they search the scriptures day after day to see if, watch this, to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. How many of you guys hear me on Sunday and go back and say, let me flip through the scriptures that Pastor Larry done shared with me just to make sure. I want you to. I want you guys to email me like neon. They say, Pastor Larry, you said this. Is this what you, what you, I, I love that. Because it's showing that Neon is searching the scriptures. Studying God's word for yourself. Not only studying it, but memorizing it. It says in, in Psalm 119, that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. you. You have to hold God's word in your heart to get through some things. I told you, some of us, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your name, some of us had a degree in cussology. You know how to lay it out, lay it down. When somebody made you upset, you know what to say, and you know exactly how to say it. But when you hide God's word in your heart, it changes you. It makes you different. It allows you to say, I don't have to handle things that way any longer. But it takes by memorizing and lastly by meditating on God's word. In Psalm 1, it says, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with the mockers. Verse 2, but they delight. Someone say delight. But they delight in the law of the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Meditating on it day and night. How many of us are meditating on God's word, taking it and chewing it, digesting it, that cow stomach, bringing it back up, chewing it again, getting the most out of that word? But not only is God's word, but it's through prayer. I mean, there was a popular movie, one, was it War Room? Where it, it, it showed us the importance of this thing called prayer, this thing that sometimes we overlook. As believers, through prayer, we, we can praise God. We, we can give him thanksgiving. It, it, it's an intercession type thing. Through our prayers, we can petition God for others, and our prayers also take us to a point that we can confess certain things to God. L God, listen, we confess those sins to God and saying, God, I acknowledge that things are sin to you, and therefore there are sin to me. I'm not trying to change God's word to fit. Me, God, I want to fit your word. 
It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from most unrighteousness. Come on now, that's not full of all unrighteousness. But we don't like to confess sins, but when we confess it, we admit that we're wrong. We admit that we are still struggling with this thing. But when you confess it, you're saying, God, I acknowledge that you say this is sin, so I acknowledge it. It, it, Listen, it says that God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Someone say no. God said it, that settles it. It doesn't matter whether I believe it or not or even understand it or not. Confessing our sins, that time of prayer. So it's, it's, it's our motive, it's our marking, knowing that you've been marked by God. And lastly, for us to represent God, to represent God, we have to know our mandate. Knowing our mandate. That's verse 18 and 19. It says that all of this comes from God who has reconciled us to himself through the Messiah and has given us the ministry. Someone say ministry. Giving us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, for through the Messiah, God is reconciling the world to himself. Who here knows that God is reconciling us, the entire world, to himself? By not counting their sins against them, he has committed his message of reconciliation to us all. The mandate is the fact that Christ has given us the ministry, that's the work, but also the message of reconciliation. Ministry is what we've all been given. That's that's the Great Commission. We're all given this ministry of reconciliation to go out, to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, making disciples of everyone. We are all. Someone say all. Not just, just, not just the minis- missionaries that we support overseas, and not, not just the outreach team, but all. Who said that? Thank you so much, Dre. Hurting back and all. Thank you, brother. We all have this work, this ministry of reconciliation. We all have it. But the message of reconciliation, that's the word. That's your individual experiences that God has given you and how you share that with someone else. So, so, so watch this. I, I, I preached to you today. But two weeks ago, Pastor Davson was preaching as well. He was giving the message of reconciliation. Did we do it both the same? No. He did it a hundred times better than me. But your experiences, who you are, allow you to have a special message of reconciliation to go to a particular person or a particular group of people. I share this. I'm, I'm from Philly, born and raised. I, I, I ain't never been scared. I ain't never been scarred, except for one time going to West Philly. It was too late. It was an area that I know I shouldn't have been in, chasing after a girl. But, but I, I know I can go back to Philly and not be scared. That I'm able to share a message of reconciliation to a group of people in that particular area because that's my ministry. That's my experiences. But it doesn't make me any different because you may have an experience. Pastor Davson can go to Brazil. Actually, I'm going to Brazil with Pastor Davson pretty soon. <laughs> Amen. And there's going to be some areas that I'm going to start walking to. And Pastor Davson, no, 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 no. No, Osa, 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 look at me. <laughs> I learned the Brazil. I'm learning my Portuguese. I'm learning it. Osa means look at me. Osa, Osa, Osa. He's going to say, no, no, don't go over there. There's some bad people over there. I can go over there, Pastor Larry. You stay here. But it's that message of reconciliation, that part of us that we can't be ashamed of. This is for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Actually, this is my life verse. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the righteousness of God in salvation. Oh, my goodness. I went blank for a second. That's nothing but the enemy. For those who believe, first to the Greek and also to the Hebrew, for... For Jew and Gentile, but I learned it from Greek and Hebrew. 
for the Gentile and the Hebrew. For there is the righteousness of faith revealed from faith to faith, for the just shall live by faith. But it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the message that God has given me to give to someone else. Don't be ashamed of what God has done to you and through you. Because those experiences are going to help someone else. I tell you, what you've gone through is not for you. It's for someone else. Just say that, come here, baby. I, yeah, I know, I know. Listen, I know right now. It's, it's, you're going through you're right now. You've, you flunked that grade. Listen, let me share with you that I, I've done the same thing. Oh, I, listen, I, you, you're having a child out of wedlock. Come on, come here, come here. I, I did the same thing. I, I, it happened to me. It's not the end of the world. To say, oh, yeah, I know, I know. You, you're, you're hooked on drugs. You, you, you're struggling with this thing. Come here, come here, come here. Let me share a little bit about my life and the struggles that I've been through. It's not for you. It's for that person to share with them that they can get through. It's a message. But when you represent Christ to represent Christ, these are the things that we have to be willing to lean into. It's a mandate. It's the, our missio dia. It's the mission of God, and God's mission has always been people. And because God's mission has always been people, our mission has to be people as well. God loves everyone. So so what does that mean? What should we do? Love everyone. But what does that mean? See, it's, it's nice now because right now we're around people, most people we know, and most people either think like us or... But I'm telling you guys, when, when, when God starts pulling people that don't look like us, that have been hurt by the world, and they don't think like us, and they walk in, and, 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 and they may not smell like we like, or they may not be holding the hand of a person that we don't think they should be holding the hand, what does your love for Christ look like then? Are you quick to judge? Are you quick to rebuke? Because when I read my Bible, Jesus didn't affirm or the things that were going on, but he loved. And God, Jesus hung around in some bad places with people that we probably would look at as being bad people. But he knew that his mandate, he knew his motive, he knew the marking that was on his life. And that's what I want us to be certain of today. I want you to know that you, want, you, you, you are, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are a representative. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ, given a message to represent Christ to a world. When I, uh, when I first gave my life, well, I got recommitted, can I say, recommitted my life to Christ. I was baptized and I, was, I gave my life at a young age, but in my late 20s. So not that long ago. <laughs> and, and, and my father in the ministry, Pastor John Green, who since went on to be with the Lord, he, he shared me the stories about what, they, what it was like when they were ministering in the, in the 70s. Oh, all the way back then. And how they preached on corners, on soapboxes, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in Mount Airy. And it worked for them. It was effective in them presenting Christ to others. Try that today. I'm not saying it won't work, but as we represent Christ, there's other ways. We're, we're Actually, we are representing Christ right now. How? Because there's people right now watching in Africa, watching in Alabama, watching in Virginia, watching overseas right now. As we share this good news, it's a representing Christ in a different way. We don't have to do it the same way. That's representing Christ to a world. You do it through the dance ministry now. Representing Christ. There's someone that watched that did not know Jesus, and something about that Yolanda Adams song is going to touch them and is going to begin to change them. But it's the idea of saying that we will represent and represent Christ. Because who, there was a time that you, don't you dare dance in church. You, you do know that, right? You do know that there was a time where you didn't have an electric organ. There, there, there's, a, there's, a gospel, there's a gospel legend by the name of uh, James Cleveland. And who here knows, when he brought the electric guitar in church, they lost their minds. 
He brought an organ. How dare you bring an electric? I shared a story about the time, one time, and we're going to close on this. I, I, might have shared, I, I was preaching at a church, and, and this is a while ago, and, um, and, and, and my printer wasn't working, so I had to bring my laptop. And this is way before preachers, where it became cool to bring your device in church. And so I said, okay, I'm going to preach the word, but I got to preach it from my laptop. You know? And so I bring it, I brought it. This, this is a while ago. And I, I, I felt as though I did a good job preaching. I, you know, I, was, I, I don't think I've ever preached a bad sermon. No, I'm not that arrogant. But after service, after feeling this way, and, and, I, and, 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 and we're going to be hot. Can we be hot again? I was at a very low point in my life. I, I, I just experienced a relationship, a marriage, where someone walked away from me. And I was struggling with depression and, and not feeling good about myself because this person said they didn't want to be with me any longer and they wanted to experience the world. And I was struggling at that time in my life. Um, but, but, but God had allowed me to start preaching again. And, and so I was preaching and I, and, and I felt as though that, oh God, I'm getting back into it. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness because I went through a low point. I, I went starting doing the old things that I used to do. And, and now, God, you're, you're working in me. And, and God, thank you for this opportunity because I've never asked to preach anywhere. Never. And, and, I, and, and after service, people are greeting me and saying, thank you. And they call me Minister Redmond at the time. Thank you so much for the word. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this old, older saint came to me and said to me, how dare you bring an electrical device in the pulpit? How dare you? Didn't ask what might have happened. Didn't care about that. But said, how dare you? If I wasn't settled in my spirit with Christ, that probably would have crushed me. But I didn't let it. Because right after that, he said, you, you, you brought the electrical device, and, how, and you didn't even talk about your wife. I said, thank you, sir, but I'm not married. Oh, okay, well, you wouldn't preach in my church with an electrical device. I said, well, thank you. Please let me know that church just in case I get the invitation because I will not. <laughs> but as we represent Christ, there are going to be some people that may be opposed to it. But we have to have it settled in our own hearts by having God's word hidden in our hearts. To say that, God, no matter what may come my way, I'm set I'm settled. I'm ground in representing Christ to a broken world. I pray that you want to represent Christ better today. I pray that you know and latch on to your motive and your mandate. That you lock into the fact that you've been marked. People are going to look at you different and walk okay, be okay with it. But I want you to represent Christ this day and every day. And if you get it wrong, that's fine. Jesus knew it. But have a heart that's open to run back to him. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. Lord God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you allow us to represent you in this broken world. Lord God, I pray that you would just get the glory out of everything that we do, say, and think. Now, God, I pray that you would just move in this place. That you would change us, God, from the inside out. God, that you would allow our lives to look more like your son's Jesus Christ. 